American and British English Spelling Differences, Wikipedia Article Audio Many of the differences between American and British English date back to a time when spelling standards had not yet developed. For instance, some spellings seen as American today were once commonly used in Britain and some spellings seen as British were once commonly used in the United States. A British standard began to emerge following the 1755 publication of Samuel Johnson's A Dictionary of the English Language, and an American standard started following the work of Noah Webster and in particular his An American Dictionary of the English Language, first published in 1828. Webster's efforts at spelling reform were somewhat effective in his native country, resulting in certain well-known patterns of spelling differences between the American and British varieties of English. However, English language spelling reform has rarely been adopted otherwise, and so modern English orthography varies somewhat between countries and is far from phonemic in any country. Historical Origins Latin-derived spellings In the early 18th century, English spelling was inconsistent. These differences became noticeable after the publishing of influential dictionaries. Today's British English spellings mostly follow Johnson's A Dictionary of the English Language, while many American English spellings follow Webster's An American Dictionary of the English Language. Webster was a proponent of English spelling reform for reasons both philological and nationalistic. In A Companion to the American Revolution, John Algio notes, it is often assumed that characteristically American spellings were invented by Noah Webster. He was very influential in popularizing certain spellings in America, but he did not originate them. Rather he chose already existing options such as center, color, and check for the simplicity, analogy or etymology. William Shakespeare's first folios, for example, used spellings like center and color as much as center and color. Webster did attempt to introduce some reformed spellings, as did the simplified spelling board in the early 20th century, but most were not adopted. In Britain, the influence of those who preferred the Norman spellings of words proved to be decisive. Later spelling adjustments in the United Kingdom had little effect on today's American spellings and vice versa. For the most part, the spelling systems of most Commonwealth countries and Ireland closely resemble the British system. In Canada, the spelling system can be said to follow both British and American forms, and Canadians are somewhat more tolerant of foreign spellings when compared with other English-speaking nationalities. Australian spelling has also strayed slightly from British spelling, with some American spellings incorporated as standard. New Zealand spelling is almost identical to British spelling, except in the word fjord. There is also an increasing use of macrons in words that originated in Mori and an unambiguous preference for ISE endings. Most words ending in an unstressed are in British English and in or in American English. Wherever the vowel is unreduced in pronunciation, e.g., contour, valour, paramour, and troubadour the spelling is consistent everywhere. Most words of this kind came from Latin where the ending was spelled or. They were first adopted into English from early Old French, and the ending was spelled or or or. After the Norman conquest of England, the ending became R to match the Old French spelling. The R ending was not only used in New English borrowings, but was also applied to the earlier borrowings that had used or. However, or was still sometimes found, and the first three folios of Shakespeare's plays used both spellings before they were standardized to R in the fourth folio of 1685. After the Renaissance, 
new borrowings from Latin were taken up with their original or ending and many words once ending in R went back to OR. Many words of the R slash OR group do not have a Latin counterpart, for example, armor, behavior, harbor, neighbor, also arbor, meaning shelter, though census tree and tool are always arbor, a false cognate of the other word. Some 16th and early 17th century British scholars indeed insisted that or be used for words from Latin and are for French loans, but in many cases the etymology was not clear, and therefore some scholars advocated or only and others are only. Are, or. Webster's 1828 dictionary had only or and is given much of the credit for the adoption of this form in the United States. By contrast, Johnson's 1755 dictionary used R for all words still so spelled in Britain, but also for words where the U has since been dropped, ambassador, emperor, governor, perturbator, inferior, Superior, error, horror, mirror, tenor, terror, tremor. Johnson, unlike Webster, was not an advocate of spelling reform, but chose the spelling best derived, as he saw it, from among the variations in his sources. He preferred French over Latin spellings because, as he put it, the French generally supplied us. English speakers who moved to America took these preferences with them, and H. L. Mencken notes that honor appears in the 1776 Declaration of Independence, but it seems to have got there rather by accident than by design. In Jefferson S. original draft it is spelled honor. In Britain, examples of color, flavor, behavior, harbor, and neighbor rarely appear in Old Bailey court records from the 17th and 18th centuries, whereas there are thousands of examples of their R counterparts. One notable exception is honor. Honor and honor were equally frequent in Britain until the 17th century, honor still is, in the UK, the usual spelling as a person's name and appears in Honor Oak, a district of London. In derivatives and inflected forms of the R slash or words, British usage depends on the nature of the suffix used. The U is kept before English suffixes that are freely attachable to English words and suffixes of Greek or Latin origin that have been adopted into English. However, before Latin suffixes that are not freely attachable to English words, the U. Derivatives and inflected forms In American usage, derivatives and inflected forms are built by simply adding the suffix in all cases since the U is absent to begin with. American usage, in most cases, keeps the U in the word glamour, which comes from Scots, not Latin or French. Glamour is sometimes used in imitation of the spelling reform of other R words to OR. Nevertheless, the adjective glamorous often drops the first U. Savior is a somewhat common variant of savior in the US. The British spelling is very common for honor in the formal language of wedding invitations in the US. The name of the Space Shuttle Endeavour has a U in it as the spacecraft was named after Captain James Cook's ship, HMS Endeavour. The special car on Amtrak's Coast Starlight train is known as the Pacific Parlor Car, not Pacific Parlor. Proper names such as Pearl Harbor or Sydney Harbor are usually spelled according to their native variety spelling vocabulary. The name of the herb savory is thus spelled everywhere, although the related adjective savory, like savor, has a U in the UK. Honor and arbor have or in Britain, as mentioned above. As a general noun, rigor slash rr slash has a U in the UK, the medical term rigor does not, such as in rigor mortis, which is Latin. 
Derivations of rigor slash rigor such as rigorous, however, are typically spelled without a u even in the UK. Words with the ending irrier, irrier, or similar are spelled thus everywhere. Exceptions The word armor was once somewhat common in American usage but has disappeared except in some brand names such as Under Armor. Commonwealth Usage Commonwealth countries normally follow British usage. Canadian English most commonly uses the R ending and R in derivatives and inflected forms. However, owing to the close historic, economic, and cultural relationship with the United States, R endings are also sometimes used. Throughout the late 19th and early to mid 20th century, most Canadian newspapers chose to use the American usage of OR endings, originally to save time and money in the era of manual movable type. However, in the 1990s, the majority of Canadian newspapers officially updated their spelling policies to the British usage of R. This coincided with a renewed interest in Canadian English and the release of the updated Gage Canadian Dictionary in 1997 and the first Oxford Canadian Dictionary in 1998. Historically, most libraries and educational institutions in Canada have supported the use of the Oxford English Dictionary rather than the American Webster's Dictionary. Today, the use of a distinctive set of Canadian English spellings is viewed by many Canadians as one of the cultural uniquenesses of Canada. Re, er. In Australia, or endings enjoyed some use throughout the 19th century and in the early 20th century. Like in Canada though, most major Australian newspapers have switched from or endings to our endings. The R spelling is taught in schools nationwide as part of the Australian curriculum. The most notable countrywide use of the OR ending is for the Australian Labour Party, which was originally called the Australian Labour Party, but was frequently referred to as both Labour and Labour. The Labour was adopted from 1912 onward due to the influence of the American Labour Movement and King O'Malley. Aside from that, R is now almost universal in Australia. New Zealand English, while sharing some words and syntax with Australian English, follows British usage. In British English, some words from French, Latin, or Greek end with a consonant followed by an unstressed re slash slash or slash slash. In American English, most of these words have the ending er. The difference is most common for words ending bre or tre, British spellings caliber, center, fiber, goiter, leader, luster, maneuver, meager, meter, miter, niter, ochre, reconnoiter, saber, saltpetri, sepulcher, somber, specter. Theater and titer all have ER in American spelling. Exceptions 2 In Britain, both RE and ER spellings were common before Johnson's Dictionary was published. In Shakespeare's first folios, ER spellings are used the most. Most English words that today use ER were spelled RE at one time. In American English, Almost all of these have become ER, but in British English only some of them have. Words that were once spelled re include chapter, December, disaster, enter, filter, letter, member, minister, monster, November, number, October, oyster, powder, proper, September, sober and tender. Words using the meter suffix have normally had the ER spelling from earliest use in English. Examples include thermometer and barometer. The E preceding the R is kept in American inflected forms of nouns and verbs, for example, fibers, reconnoitered, 
centering, which are fibers, reconnoitered, and centering respectively in British English. Centering is an interesting example, since, according to the OED, it is a word, of three syllables, yet there is no vowel in the spelling corresponding to the second syllable. The three-syllable version is listed as only the American pronunciation of centering on the Oxford Dictionary's online website. The E is dropped for other derivations, for example, central, fibrous, spectral. However, the existence of related words without E before the R is not proof for the existence of an re-British spelling, for example, entry and entrance come from enter which has not been spelled on tray for centuries. The difference relates only to root words, er rather than re is universal as a suffix for agentive and comparative forms. One outcome is the British distinction of meter for a measuring instrument from meter for the unit of length. However, while poetic meter is often re, pentameter, hexameter etc. are always er. Many other words have ER in British English. These include Germanic words, such as anger, mother, timber, and water and romance words danger, quarter and river. The ending CRE, as in acre, lucre, massacre, and mediocre, is used in both British and American English to show that the C is pronounced slash K slash rather than slash S slash. The spellings ogre and euchre are also the same in both British and American English. Commonwealth Usage 2 Theatre is the prevailing American spelling used to refer to both the dramatic arts and buildings where stage performances and screenings of films take place, for example, a national newspaper such as the New York Times would use theatre in its entertainment section. However, the spelling theater appears in the names of many New York City theaters on Broadway and elsewhere in the United States. In 2003, the American National Theater was referred to by the New York Times as the American National Theater, but the organization uses re in the spelling of its name. The John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts in Washington, D.C. has the more common American spelling theater in its references to the Eisenhower Theater, part of the Kennedy Center. Some cinemas outside New York also use the theater spelling. C. S. C. Furthermore, the spelling theater is sometimes used in the United States when referring to the art form of theater, while the building itself, as noted above, generally is spelled theater. For example, the University of Wisconsin-Madison has a Department of Theater and Drama, which offers courses that lead to the Bachelor of Arts in Theater, and whose professed aim is to prepare our graduate students for successful 21st century careers in the theater both as practitioners and scholars. May be dropped for example in honorary, honorific, honorist, vigorous, humorous, laborious, and invigorate, may be either dropped or kept, for example in coloration and colorize or colorize, or, may be kept, for example in colorist. Some place names in the United States use center in their names. Examples include the Stonebriar Center Mall, the cities of Rockville Center and Centerville, Center County, and Center College. Sometimes, these places were named before spelling changes but more often the spelling merely serves as an affectation. For British Accouter, the American practice varies, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary prefers the re-spelling, but the American Heritage Dictionary of the English language prefers the ER spelling. Some words take only the Z form worldwide, for example capsize, seize, size and prize. These, however, do not contain the suffix size, 
others take only s worldwide, advertise, advise, arise, chastise, circumcise, comprise, compromise, demise, despise, devise, disguise, excise, exercise, franchise, guise, improvise, incise, reprise, revise, rise, supervise, surmise, surprise, televise, and wise. Some of these do not contain the suffix ise, but some do. One special case is the verb to prize, which is spelled prize in the US and prize everywhere else, including Canada, although in North American English it is almost always replaced by pry, a back formation from or alteration of prize. A topsail schooner built in Australia in 1829 was called Enterprise, whereas there have been US ships and spacecraft named Enterprise. More recent French loanwords keep the respelling in American English. These are not exceptions when a French style pronunciation is used slash or slash slash, as with double entendre, genre, and ovra. However, the unstressed slash slash and slash slash pronunciation of an er ending is used more often with some words, including cotter, macabre, maitre d', notre dame, piaster, and timber. Zian, shen. Greek derived spellings. Ise, ice. Origin and recommendations. The re-endings are mostly standard throughout the Commonwealth. The ER spellings are recognized as minor variants in Canada, partly due to American influence, and are sometimes used in proper names. The British English doubling is used for all inflections and for the noun suffixes ER and OR. Therefore, British English usage is cancelled, counselor, cruelist, labeled, modeling, quarreled, signaling, traveler, and traveling. Americans typically use canceled, counselor, cruelist, labeled, modeling, quarreled, signaling, traveler, and traveling. However, for certain words such as canceled, the LL spelling is very common in American English as well. The word parallel keeps a single L in British English, as in American English, to avoid the unappealing cluster L dot. Words with two vowels before a final L are also spelled with LL in British English before a suffix when the first vowel either acts as a consonant, or belongs to a separate syllable. British woolen is a further exception due to the double vowel. Also, woolly is accepted in American English. Though woolly prevails in both systems, the verb surveil, a back formation from surveillance, always makes surveilling, surveilled. For advice slash advice and device slash device, American English and British English both keep the noun verb distinction both graphically and phonetically for the noun and, for the verb. For license slash license or practice slash practice, British English also keeps the noun verb distinction graphically pronunciation. On the other hand, American English uses license and practice for both nouns and verbs pronunciation in both cases too. American English has kept the Anglo French spelling for defense and offense, which are defense and offense in British English. Likewise, there are the American pretense and British pretense, but derivatives such as defensive, offensive, and pretension are always thus spelled in both systems. Australian and Canadian usage generally follows British. British caliper or caliper, American caliper, British jewellery, American jewellery. The word originates from the old French word jowl. The standard pronunciation slash d-u-l-r-i slash does not reflect this difference, 
but the non-standard pronunciation slash d-u-l-r-i slash does. According to Fowler, jewellery used to be the rhetorical and poetic spelling in the UK, and was still used by the times into the mid-20th century. Canada has both, but jewellery is more often used. Likewise, the Commonwealth has jeweller and the US has jeweller for a jewellery seller. The spelling connection is now rare in everyday British usage, its use lessening as knowledge of Latin lessons, and it is not used at all in the US, the more common connection has become the standard worldwide. According to the Oxford English Dictionary the older spelling is more etymologically conservative, since the original Latin word had zio. The American usage comes from Webster, who abandoned zion in favor of shin by analogy with verbs like connect. Connection was still the house style of the Times of London until the 1980s and was still used by the British Post Office for its telephone services in the 1970s, but had by then been overtaken by connection in regular usage. Complexion is standard worldwide and complexion is rare. However, the adjective complected, although sometimes objected to, is standard in the US as an alternative to complexioned, but is not used in this way in the UK, although there is a rare usage to mean complicated. In some cases, words with old-fashioned spellings are retained widely in the US for historical reasons. Usage The I spelling is often incorrectly seen as an Americanism in Britain. However, the Oxford English Dictionary recommends I's and notes that the ISE spelling is from French, the suffix, whatever the element to which it is added, is in its origin the Greek iota zeta epsilon iota nu, Latin is ra, and, as the pronunciation is also with z, there is no reason why in English the special French spelling should be followed, in opposition to that which is at once etymological and phonetic. The OED lists the ISE form as an alternative. Publications by Oxford University Press such as Henry Watson Fowler S.A. Dictionary of Modern English Usage, Hart's Rules and the Oxford Guide to English Usage also recommend I's. However, Robert Allen's Pocket Fowler's Modern English Usage considers either spelling to be acceptable anywhere but the U.S. Also. Oxford University itself does not agree with the OUP, but advocates ISE instead of I's in its staff style guide. American spelling avoids ISE endings in words like organize, realize, and recognize. Exceptions 3 Is, is, og, og. British spelling mostly uses ISE. While I's is also used, the ratio between ISE and I's stood at 3,2 in the British National Corpus up to 2002. The spelling ISE is more commonly used in UK mass media and newspapers, including The Times, The Daily Telegraph and The Economist. Meanwhile, I's is used in some British-based academic publications, such as Nature the Biochemical Journal and the Times Literary Supplement. The dominant British English usage of ISE is preferred by Cambridge University Press. The minority British English usage of IS is known as Oxford Spelling and is used in publications of the Oxford University Press, most notably the Oxford English Dictionary. It can be identified using the IETF language tag NGBOxandite. In Canada, the I's ending is more common, whereas in Ireland, India, Australia, and New Zealand ISE spellings strongly prevail. The ISE form is preferred in Australian English at a ratio of about 3 1 according to the Macquarie Dictionary. The same applies to derivatives and inflections such as colonization slash colonization, or modernization slash modernization. 
Worldwide, I's endings prevail in scientific writing and are commonly used by many international organizations, such as the United Nations Organizations and the International Organization for Standardization. The European Union S style guides require the usage of ISE. Proofreaders at the EU's publications office ensure consistent spelling in official publications such as the official journal, but the I spelling may be found in other documents. Some verbs ending in I's or ISE do not come from Greek, iota zeta epsilon iota nu, and their endings are therefore not interchangeable. AE and OE Some words spelled with I's in American English are not used in British English, etc., e.g., the verb burglarize, regularly formed on the noun burglar, where the equivalent in British, and other versions of, English is the back formation burgle and not burglaris. The ending is is British and is is American. Thus, in British English analyze, catalyze, hydrolyze and paralyze, but in American English analyze, catalyze, hydrolyze and paralyze. Analyze seems to have been the more common spelling in 17th and 18th century English but many of the great dictionaries of that time John Kersey S of 1702, Nathan Bailey S of 1721 and Samuel Johnson S of 1755 prefer analyze. In Canada, is prevails, just as in the US. In South Africa, Australia and New Zealand, is stands alone. English verbs ending in lice or lies are not similar to the Greek verb, which is lambda omega L. Instead they come from the noun form lambda sigma iota lysis with the ise or i suffix. For example, analyse comes from French analyzer, formed by haplology from the French analysiser, which would be spelled analysis or analyses in English. Hart's Rules for Compositors and Readers at the University Press, Oxford states, in verbs such as analyze, catalyze, paralyze, lis is part of the Greek stem and not a suffix like is. The spelling is is therefore etymologically incorrect, and must not be used, unless American printing style is being followed. British and other Commonwealth English uses the ending log and gog while American English commonly uses the ending log and gog for words like analog, catalog, dialog, monolog, homolog, etc. The GU spelling, as in catalog, is used in the US, but catalog is more common. Additionally, in American English, Dialogue is an extremely common spelling compared to dialogue, although both are treated as acceptable ways to spell the word. Synagogue is seldom used without UE. In Australia, analogue is standard for the adjective, but both analogue and analogue are current for the noun, in all other cases the GU endings strongly prevail, for example monologue except for such expressions as dialogue box in computing, which are also used in the UK. In Australia, analogue is used in its technical and electronic sense, as in analogue electronics. In Canada and New Zealand, analogue is used, but analogue has some currency as a technical term. The UE is absent worldwide in related words like analogy, analogous, and analogist. Both British and American English use the spelling GU with a silent UE for certain words that are not part of the OG set, such as tongue, plague, vague, and league. In addition, when the UE is not silent, as in the words argue, ague and segue, all varieties of English use GU. Many words, especially medical words, 
that are written with AE slash AE or OE slash OE in British English are written with just an E in American English. The sounds in question are slash I slash or slash slash. Examples, a Ian, an Aemia, an Aesthesia, C.A. Ekam, C.A. Eziam, C.O. Eliac, Dire O.E.A., in C. Klopa Edia, F.A. Esas, F.O. Edel, G.Y.N.A. Ecology, H.A. Immoglobin, H.A. Immophilia, Leukaemia, O. Esophagus, O. Estrogen, Orthopoetic, Pala Eontology, P.A. Ediatric, P.A. Edophile. Onology is acceptable in American English but is deemed a minor variant of analogy, whereas although archaeology and amoeba exist in American English, the British version's archaeology and amoeba are more common. The chemical heme is spelled heme in American English, to avoid confusion with hem. Words that can be spelled either way in American English include aesthetics and archaeology as well as palaestra, for which the simplified form palestra is described by Merriam-Webster as chiefly Britain. Commonwealth Usage 3 Doubled Consonants Words that can be spelled either way in British English include in Cyclopa etia, homoeopathy, chama elian, media eval, foetid and foetus. The spellings foetus and foetal are Britishisms based on a mistaken etymology. The etymologically correct original spelling fetus reflects the Latin original and is the standard spelling in medical journals worldwide. The Oxford English Dictionary notes that in Latin manuscripts both fetus and fetus are used. The ancient Greek diphthongs and were transliterated into Latin as and. The ligatures A E and O E were introduced when the sounds became monophthongs, and later applied to words not of Greek origin, in both Latin and French. In English, which has adopted words from all three languages, it is now usual to replace A E slash A E with A E slash A E and O E slash O E with O E slash O E. In many words, the digraph has been reduced to a lone e in all varieties of English, for example, o economics, pra emium, and a enigma. In others, it is kept in all varieties, for example, phoenix and usually subpoena, but phoenix in Virginia. This is especially true of names, Caesar, Oedipus, Phoebe, etc. There is no reduction of Latin AE plurals, nor where the digraph slash does not result from the Greek style ligature, for example, maelstrom, toe. The British form aeroplane is an instance. The now chiefly North American airplane is not a respelling but a recoining, modeled after airship and aircraft. The word airplane dates from 1907 at which time the prefix arrow was trisyllabic, often written arrow. Doubled in British English In Canada, E is usually preferred over OE and often over AE, but OE and AE are sometimes found in the academic and scientific writing as well as government publications. In Australia, encyclopedia and medieval are spelled with E rather than AE as with American usage, and the Macquarie Dictionary also notes a growing tendency towards replacing AE and OE with E worldwide. Elsewhere, the British usage prevails, but the spellings with just E are increasingly used. Maneuver is the only spelling in Australia, and the most common one in Canada, where maneuver and manoeuvre are also sometimes found. Doubled in American English Dropped E Hard and soft C Past tense differences Different spellings for different meanings Different spellings for different pronunciations Miscellaneous spelling differences 
Compounds and hyphens. Acronyms and abbreviations. Punctuation. Inline citations. Sources referenced. The final consonant of an English word is sometimes doubled in both American and British spelling when adding a suffix beginning with a vowel, for example strip slash stripped, which prevents confusion with stripe slash striped and shows the difference in pronunciation. Generally, this happens only when the word's final syllable is stressed and when it also ends with a lone vowel followed by a lone consonant. In British English, however, a final L is often doubled even when the final syllable is unstressed. This exception is no longer usual in American English, seemingly because of Noah Webster. The LL spellings are nevertheless still deemed acceptable variants by both Merriam-Webster Collegiate and American Heritage Dictionaries. Among consonants other than L, practice varies for some words, such as where the final syllable has secondary stress or an unreduced vowel. In the United States, the spellings kidnapped and worshipped, which were introduced by the Chicago Tribune in the 1920s, are common, but kidnapped and worshipped prevail. Kidnapped and worshipped are the only standard British spellings. However, focused is the predominant spelling in both British and American English, focused being just a minor variant in British English. Miscellaneous Conversely, there are words where British writers prefer a single L and Americans a double L. In American usage, the spelling of words is usually not changed when they form the main part of other words, especially in newly formed words and in words whose main part is in common use. Words with this spelling difference include willful, skillful, thraldom, appall, fulfill, fulfillment, enrollment, installment. These words have monosyllabic cognates always written with LL, will, skill, thrall, paul, fill, roll, stall. Cases where a single L nevertheless occurs in both American and British English include null and null, annulment, till and till. This should be considered a hypercorrection as till predates the use of until and others where the connection is not clear or the monosyllabic cognate is not in common use in American English. In the UK, a single L is generally preferred in distill, instill, enroll, and enthrallment, and enthrall, although LL was formerly used, these are always spelled with LL in American usage. The former British spellings install, fullness, and dullness are now quite rare. The Scottish tollbooth is cognate with tollbooth, but it has a distinct meaning. In both American and British usages, words normally spelled LL usually drop the second L when used as prefixes or suffixes, for example full useful, handful, all almighty, altogether, well welfare, welcome, chill chill blame. Both the British fulfill and the American fulfill never use LL in the middle. Johnson wavered on this issue. His Dictionary of 1755 Lemaitis Distill and Instill, Downhill and Uphill. British English sometimes keeps silent E when adding suffixes where American English does not. Generally speaking, British English drops it in only some cases in which it is needed to show pronunciation whereas American English only uses it where needed. Both forms of English keep the silent E in the words dying, singeing, and swinging, to distinguish from dying, singing, swinging. In contrast, the verb bathe and the British verb bath both form bathing. Both forms of English vary for tinge and twinge, both prefer cringing, hinging, lunging, syringing. AC is generally soft when followed by an E, I, 
or why. One word with a pronunciation that is an exception in British English, skeptic, is spelled skeptic in American English. See miscellaneous spelling differences below. In the UK, Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada, it is more common to end some past tense verbs with a T as in learned or dreamt rather than learned or dreamed. However, such spellings are also found in American English. Several verbs have different past tenses or past participles in American and British English. See also meter slash meter, for which there is a British English distinction between these etymologically related forms with different meanings but the standard American spelling is meter. The spelling used by the International Bureau of Weights and Measures is meter. This spelling is also the usual one for the unit of length in most English-speaking countries, but only the spelling meter is used in American English and this is officially endorsed by the United States. In a few cases, essentially the same word has a different spelling that reflects a different pronunciation. As well as the miscellaneous cases listed in the following table, the past tenses of some irregular verbs differ in both spelling and pronunciation, as with smelt versus smelt. In the table below, the main spellings are above the accepted alternative spellings. American English uses draft in all these cases. Canada uses both systems, in Australia, draft is used for technical drawings, is accepted for the current of air meaning, and is preferred by professionals in the nautical sense. The pronunciation is always the same for all meanings within a dialect. The spelling draft reflects the older pronunciation, draught. Draft emerged in the 16th century to reflect the change in pronunciation. In the COBOL programming language, through is accepted as an abbreviation of the keyword through. Since programmers like to keep their code brief, through is generally the preferred form of this keyword. British English often prefers hyphenated compounds, such as anti-smoking, whereas American English discourages the use of hyphens in compounds where there is no compelling reason, so anti-smoking is much more common. Many dictionaries do not point out such differences. Canadian and Australian usage is mixed, although Commonwealth writers generally hyphenate compounds of the form noun plus phrase. Commander-in-chief prevails in all forms of English. Compound verbs in British English are hyphenated more often than in American English. Acronyms pronounced as words are often written in title case by Commonwealth writers, but usually as upper case by Americans, for example, NASA slash NASA or UNICEF slash UNICEF. This does not apply to abbreviations that are pronounced as individual letters, such as US, IBM, or PRC, which are virtually always written as uppercase. However, sometimes title case is still used in the UK, such as PC. Contractions where the final letter is present are often written in British English without full stops slash periods. Abbreviations where the final letter is not present generally do take full stops slash periods. British English shares this convention with the French, MLLE, Madame, Drive, STE, but M for Monsieur. In American and Canadian English, Abbreviations like ST, Ave, Mr., Mrs., Ms., Drive, and Junior, usually require full stops slash periods. Some initials are usually uppercase in the US but lowercase in the UK, litter slash leader and its compounds, and anti mary diem and post mary diem. Both AM slash PM and A.M slash PM are acceptable in American English but U.S. style guides overwhelmingly favor a.m slash p.m.
The use of quotation marks, also called inverted commas or speech marks, is complicated by the fact that there are two kinds, single quotation marks and double quotation marks. British usage, at one stage in the recent past, preferred single quotation marks for ordinary use, but double quotation marks are again now increasingly common. American usage has always preferred double quotation marks, as does Canadian, Australian, and New Zealand English. It is the practice to alternate the type of quotation marks used where there is a quotation within a quotation. The convention used to be, and in American English still is, to put full stops and commas inside the quotation marks, irrespective of the sense. British English has moved away from this style while American English has kept it. British style now prefers to punctuate according to the sense, in which punctuation marks only appear inside quotation marks if they were there in the original. Formal British English practice requires a full stop to be put inside the quotation marks if the quoted item is a full sentence that ends where the main sentence ends but it is common to see the stop outside the ending quotation marks. British prefers aging, American usually aging. For the noun or verb root, British English often uses rooting, but in America rooting is used. The military term route forms rooting everywhere. However, all of these words form router whether used in the context of carpentry, data communications, or the military. Before able, British English prefers likable, livable, rateable, saleable, sizable, unshakable, where American practice prefers to drop the E, but both British and American English prefer breathable, curable, dateable, lovable, movable, notable, provable, quotable, scalable, solvable, usable, and those where the root is polysyllabic, like believable or decidable. Both systems keep the silent E when it is needed to preserve a soft C, CH, or G, such as in traceable, cacheable, changeable, both usually keep the E after DGE, as in knowledgeable, unbridgeable, and unabridgeable, both abridgment and the more regular abridgment are current in the US, only the latter in the UK. Likewise for the word lodgment. Both judgment and judgment are in use interchangeably everywhere, although the former prevails in the US and the latter prevails in the UK except in the practice of law, where judgment is standard. This also holds for abridgment and acknowledgement. Both systems prefer fledgling to fledgling, but ridgling to ridgling. Both acknowledgement, acknowledgement, abridgment, and abridgment are used in Australia, the shorter forms are endorsed by the Australian Capital Territory Government. Apart from when the E is dropped and in the word jail and some pronunciations of margarine, G can only be soft when followed by an E, I, or Y dot. The word blue always drops the E when forming bluish or bluing. The past tense of the verb to dive is most commonly found as dived in British, Australian, and New Zealand English. Dove is usually used in its place in American English. Both terms are understood in Canada and may be found either in minority use or in regional dialect in America, the past participle and past tense of the verb to get is most commonly found as got in British and New Zealand English. Gotten is also used in its place in American and Canadian, and occasionally in Australian English, as a past participle, though got is widely used as a past tense. The main exception is in the phrase ill-gotten, which is widely used in British, Australian, and New Zealand English. Both terms are understood, and may be found either in minority use or in regional dialect. This does not affect forget and beget, whose past participles are forgotten and begotten in all varieties. Any more or any more, 
in sense any longer, the single word form is usual in North America and Australia but unusual elsewhere, at least in formal writing. Other senses always have the two word form, thus Americans distinguish I couldn't love you anymore from I couldn't love you anymore. In Hong Kong English, anymore is always two words, forever or forever, traditional British English usage makes a distinction between forever, meaning for eternity, as in if you are waiting for income tax to be abolished you will probably have to wait forever, and forever, meaning continually, always, as in they are forever arguing. In British usage today, however, forever prevails in the for eternity sense as well, in spite of several style guides maintaining the distinction. American writers usually use forever regardless of which sense they intend, nearby or nearby, some British writers make the distinction between the adverbial nearby, which is written as two words, as in, no one was nearby, and the adjectival nearby, which is written as one, as in, the nearby house. In American English, the one-word spelling is standard for both forms, percent or percent, it can be correctly spelled as either one or two words, depending on the Anglophone country, but either spelling must always be consistent with its usage. British English predominantly spells it as two words, so does English in Ireland and countries in the Commonwealth of Nations such as Australia, Canada, and New Zealand. American English predominantly spells it as one word. Historically, it used to be spelled as two words in the United States, but its usage is diminishing, nevertheless it is a variant spelling in American English today. The spelling difference is reflected in the style guides of newspapers and other media agencies in the U.S., Ireland, and countries of the Commonwealth of Nations. In Canada percent is also found, mostly sourced from American press agencies.